Hello, everybody. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory Broadcast. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we thank you today. We praise you. We open our hearts and minds to you for the word of the living God and revelation from heaven. We thank you for it. We give you the praise and all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you join me today in welcoming Bishop Keith Butler? Praise God. Now, now I didn't like to call you Keith more like I did <laughs> last <laughs> week. He and I both, we're, we're, our families are close, and Keith and Phyllis and, and uh, Keith and Deborah. And, and uh, I, I don't know, but at least I called you somebody nice. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Brother Hagan back in the day when and uh, before he went on to be with the Lord, me and Keith Moore and I would be sitting in the altar and yeah. the word of the Lord to come unto him. And he'd, he'd call, he said, Keith, come up here and do whatever. And Both of you get up the same time. Sometimes he want one or he want the other, you know. So. Yeah, let's see. You Keith one, you Keith two. <laughs> Amen. Pray. Well, now we're talking about him. Lord, we pray for him and hold him. Yeah. He and Phyllis up to you. Thanks Doing God. a yes. mighty work for God yeah. in the land. Bless the Amen. God on him. Amen. We have exciting news today. We're going into the revelation of Jesus Christ. Number one, listen. It is not revelations. It is revelation. <laughs> it is the, it, it, it doesn't say revelation of the tribulation. It doesn't say revelation. It says revelation of Jesus Christ. And when you, when you take hold of that and you set yourself, that's what I'm going to get. Praise God. Amen. It makes a whole new thing, doesn't it? Well, in fact, the, Changes word, everything. the word revelation in the Greek means that which is clearly revealed. So, uh, or that which is made clearly visible. And so the Lord's making it very visible, these things to us. In fact, this book is, uh, you know, in my Bible here, it says the revelation of St. John the Divine, and that's wrong. It's not the revelation of John the Divine. It is the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in Given the, to John. Given to yeah, John, yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, in the Gospels, Jesus is revealed as Savior. And in the epistles, he's, he's revealed as the head of the church. But in this book, he's revealed as King of Kings and Lord oh, of Lords. Lord. And you can't get a complete and total picture of the Lord Jesus Christ without this book. That's right. And so many people are afraid of it. Uh, and I've known Christians who refuse to read it uh, because they think that it's a book of uh, tragedy and sorrow and pain and, and war. And what they don't understand is it is a book of blessing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a book of overcoming. And, uh, and defeat of the enemy. Keith, I never did get um, enjoyment out of reading this book until the Lord corrected me in what I was doing. I, you know, I, my, in my daily readings and so forth, and I'd come all the way up through in the book of Revelation, I'd change gears. Over here, I'm, I'm enjoying reading. I'm seeing things here. Praise God about and all these wonderful things. But the moment I would start in on the book of Revelation, I didn't consciously do it, but I immediately started to figuring out, try and figure out what, what is that? And I start all of a sudden start applying this to the end times and so forth, which is a lot of things in there. That's all that. And I think, now, now, how does that fit? What, what does, how? And, st and the Lord said, relax. Read the book and enjoy it. And one of the first things it says is blessed are those. So that means the blessing of the Lord is in this book. He said, look for the blessing. Ha! Ah, I began to enjoy this, man. It's, and and it's, it's such a cool book in, in the first place. You can have a lot of fun reading this, yeah. particularly when you get back over and find out we win. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, yes, sir. Glory. 
Well, you point out that verse 3, you've already said it. Blessed is he that, and there's three things. Blessed is he that readeth the book. And blessed is they that hear the words of this prophecy. Ah. And keep the things which are written therein. And that, you know, I was, I was looking up in the Greek again, that word there, keep. And that word keep means particularly that he'll guard it from loss. So it's just like in Matthew uh, 28, uh, Jesus says to teach them to observe all things I have commanded you. Mm -hmm. Well, that word, there's the same one here. Guard, teach them to guard from loss. Don't let this get away from you. Don't lose this. Amen. So, so we're supposed to <clears throat> read it, hear the word, praise God, keep it, and it is a book that creates blessing for us. 2 Timothy 3, 16 tells us what? That all scripture is given by inspiration yes. of God and is profitable. You know what? I, the, the word of the Lord just came to me. You know, we were talking about last week, the person who lives by faith never has to change his lifestyle because of the times. That applies to this time Very much so. as well as it does any other time. I don't care how dangerous it is. Mm -hmm. this, ain't, uh, this ain't patty cake land we're living in now. <laughs> I mean, you know, when they just jump a, jump, jump a young man on the street and hack his head off in the middle of town. I mean, come on, man. But people get stirred up about all of these different things. No, just stay in faith. Yeah. If we just walk straight and solid in faith, all, you don't have to change the way you read this book. We win in here just the same as we do in all the rest of them. That's the big Praise thing. God. We win and we win here. He goes on to say here in Revelations, of course, 1 4, John to the seven churches which are in Asia Minor. And the, one of the things that I really want to focus on is what people don't focus on in this book. People get so Good. focused on, uh, on the middle of the book and the back end of the book. And obviously, we know why, and of course they should. Yeah, sure, yeah. But but the, uh, the there are letters here to seven churches, and what the Lord talks about in those churches is the things people don't spend a lot of time looking at. And I'm, I'm hoping that uh, to today, that in maybe the next couple of days, we can look at what He says. Now there are seven churches in Asia Minor, and of course these seven churches are all today we would say all in the country of, of Turkey. But six of these churches have some real issues in it. Mm -hmm. One of them doesn't. Uh, it kind of reminds me of what we were looking at last week with this parable of the sower. They, uh, they all heard the word uh, of the four different types of ground, but only one of them was really good ground. Now, however, we also saw that anyone that wasn't good ground can become good ground. One of the okay. big things to me in, in all of these, I mean, they did some serious <laughs> wrong stuff here for the Lord to be as upset as he was concerning. But every one of them, he gave them the opportunity to repent. Oh, yeah. That's uh, just so big. I mean, yeah. I don't care how they fouled up and screwed up. He's not interested in condemning them. He said, I didn't come to condemn He's interested in them being blessed and carrying on and going straight ahead and being blessed just like he planned in the first place. Well, each, each one of them, the first thing he does with uh, each one of these churches is that he lays out, first of all, what I like about what you're doing. That's the first thing he says to them. So it wasn't all bad. No, oh, and, and every one of them, you know, he, uh, he, he, he can always find something in there that's good in us. Okay. Uh, then he, he points out the things to them that uh, he may not be too pleased about, okay? And then gives them instructions of what to do. But he always ends, as we get into it, we'll see, he always ends with these letters with uh, the overcomer and the blessing you're gonna get because you're an overcomer. And of course, that word overcomer means you're someone that prevails, gets the victory. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> receives, the, receives what he provided for you and walking in the power. And each, one, so and each one of these churches, you've got people in it that, that's surrounded by all kinds of stuff that's happening inside the church. Uh, yet, despite the fact that they are uh, surrounded by things that may not be pleasing to the Lord, 
they have made certain decisions. Uh, and, and so let, let, let's read a little bit. You bet. And, uh, what, what he says here, praise God. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, peace from, from him which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before this, his throne, or of course symbolizing the Holy Spirit. And from Jesus Christ was the faithful witness, the first begotten, the first born of the dead. Mm. Boy, it's hard, right. to get, hard to get fast. That's loaded that. right there, isn't it? Because <laughs> there is a firstborn, there's, there's a secondborn. Second, third, I fourth. don't know what number born I am, but I'm one of them I'm born. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, amen. Man, that's so good. He is the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and half past tense. Yeah. Made us kings and priests unto God and his father. Well, kings have authority. And the priest's job is to be involved in handling worship before God Almighty. Okay, amen. And so we are kings, ultimate authorities. Our words matter. Yes, they do. And praise God, we are priests before God Almighty. We handle worship and worship him. He goes on to say, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. So right off, he begins to let everybody know he's coming again. Yes, sir. And that when he does, everybody is going to see him. This is not going to be done in secret. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The Lord which is, and which was, and which is to come, and I, John, who also am your, and your brother and companion in tribulation in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, on the Isle of Patmos. Now, this man uh, is somewhere in his 90s, depending on which study you yeah. look at, 93, 95, 97, whatever. But this man is the, is the one apostle that's going to die a natural death. Banished, banished to this place where there's no food, there's no supposedly drinkable water, there's no shelter for him. Uh, they can't kill the guy. They're trying to kill Try the guy, it. and they can't Couldn't kill him. <laughs> so, so they put him in a place where he's going to starve to death, they think. And, and first thing that I noticed about John, what's John's attitude? I mean, after all this time, Lord, I've been serving you faithfully. I don't bend through all this, and here I am on this hunk of rock. Is that, is that his attitude? No. <laughs> what you see in verse 10, praise God. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. <laughs> yeah. Instead of complaining about where he was, he's in the spirit, praise God, before God. Of course, he sees this vision of Jesus, and we'll get down to the church here right, right now, verse 12. And I turned and, and to see in, in the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And these seven golden candlesticks are the seven churches. And I think it's instructive that what the Lord says about this or what John says about this is that a candlestick's job is to give light. Mm, yes. Is to give light in the darkness. Uh, and I think what we're going to read is that uh, uh, if the church isn't giving light in the darkness, the Lord's going to have something to say about it. But note, it is uh, seven candlesticks, praise God, seven golden candlesticks. Yes, sir. The way in which God sees us, extremely valuable, extremely precious, hallelujah. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with garment down to the foot. And of course, John's going to have this whole description. He's going to try to describe with his eyes, and, and, and of course, back in his day, what he's looking at. And he can't describe it. He's just doing the best he can, trying to describe just how wonderful this view yeah. of the Lord Jesus, us. Uh, amen. And it says in verse 16, he has in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went out a sharp, double-edged sword, and he's going to say, I am the one that, that's alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and death. Well, when we get to verse 20, we, we, we have here then the Lord Jesus breaks this down for us. The mystery of the seven stars was thou soft in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Each church has an angelos. This Greek word angel is angelos. is found 188 times in the New Testament. 181 times it translated angel, seven times it translated messenger. Uh, 
And oftentimes when people read this, when they, when they think about the angel of the church, they think it's pastor, but that's a different word. Mm -hmm. Totally okay. different. It's a totally different Greek word okay, here. So he's <clears throat> actually talking about that there's an angel that assists the church, an angel that assists the pastor and everyone in the church. Hebrews chapter 1, Paul yeah, wrote. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Yeah, praise God. Uh, that All ministering spirits. Sent forth to minister for them and shall be yes, heirs of salvation. Yes, sir. And so uh, I, I can recall my spiritual father, uh, Brother Hagin, uh, one time talking about how the Lord let him see his angel. And he said, I'm, I'm, I know you, you know about the same story. Yeah. Uh, and he saw this, he said, this dude was huge. Mugus. Yeah. He said he was massive, this huge, wide, tall, super tall dude. And uh, <laughs> and he finally, the Lord's talking to him. Yeah. And finally, Brother Hagin said, Lord, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> Standing there with you. Yeah, man. And the Lord said, that is your angel. And that's who's with us, praise God. But that's every, every, every believer, well, ever, every person born in this earth, has an angel assignment, and then you get born again, and and then they are released to do the things in there ever before the face of God, or in other words, they get their instructions from Him. They, uh, I, when you're talking about this one, seven angels of the churches, the Apostle Paul talked about uh, getting things out of order and get them all fouled up and so forth. You, you, you interfere with uh, angelic ministry. They, they, you lock them down. Doubt and unbelief locks them down. Well, they don't, they, they don't move on, on that except that's of God. I was saying Psalm that angels hearken to the voice, the voice of the Word. We are that voice. If we wake up, they'll hearken to our voice if we keep it in the line with the Word of God. Yes, sir. But when, when we read past that, that verse seven stars, the angels of the seven churches, mm -hmm. there is um, those angels that the apostle Paul was talking about in those churches. Then he, the, uh, then the Lord said, talking over here about removing the angel from your church. Mm -hmm. All the people in there got angels working with them or, or available to them anyway. And those that are believing for it and know what we're just talking about, those angels are ministering for them in their lives and in their ministries. But now you come into that church, there are angels assigned to that church that would do great and marvelous things concerning protection. And listen, people don't know how to take advantage of that angelic strength and power. Yeah. Oh man, that's what happens when you stand out and speak to a storm and speak to this, this uh, terrible thing that's trying to happen. You loose that angel, man, I mean, ain't no storm on earth can stand up to what those fellas can do. Hallelujah. Oh. And each angel has been given for the purpose of helping each individual church in its individual mission. I, yes, per, I personally believe oh, I every too. church has a specific mission. That's these for guys it. right here. Yes, sir. I believe that. Yeah, specific mission to, and job for it to do. And there's an angel to, to make sure that it gets done, which is why it's important, I think, why every individual must be in the church they belong, not the one they choose, the one God sent them to. I'm glad you brought that up, Keith, because I'm I am more serious about this today than and I've all I've always I knew it I knew it back before I uh, left as a student at Old Roberts University. How important the local church is and how powerful this is the most powerful thing's ever been done on this earth. Mm -hmm. But the um, forty six Nearly 47 years later, I am more vehement about it than I've ever been that the first thing you need to do is pray till you find out the sheepfold you're supposed to be in and you go get in it 
I don't care where it's located. Mm -hmm. It may be on the other side of the world, but on, uh, if that's true, then over there is where your joy is. Over there is where, you, where your protection is and the anointing is. Because that's, that's where your grace is, if that's where God's called that's you. That's where you find your place in ministry. Oh, yes. And so many people have allowed Satan to use affliction, persecution, cares of the squirrel, deceitfulness of riches, and lust of other things. Oh, it's too far. Got to drive yeah. 45 minutes across town. My Thank flesh you. is tired. Oh, the usher made me angry. He spoke spoke harsh word to me today when I showed up in the church. Oh, uh, I mean, it, they come up with all these kind of excuses and they choose churches based on personality, speaking style, size of church, uh, whether or not the church has status yeah. or doesn't have status, everything except the Holy Ghost. We uh, are soldiers in the army of the Lord. Yes, sir. Soldiers are supposed to salute. Now, to I remember, yeah. particularly when I was... In basic training, Fort Bliss, Texas, I'd rather have been anywhere on the whole earth right there than that bed. Can you imagine me coming in and saying, that don't, we, don't we have tr training facility in Hawaii? I, I believe I'm going to go there. I don't like the weather here. Can you imagine what they'd have done to me? <laughs> I'll tell you, I'd have been a month getting over the soreness they, they struck on my body from working me for saying such a dumb, stupid thing. Well, how much more do we have the perfect place that God wants us not only to receive, but to sow into, and we need to be finding out and getting into it, and we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Brother Keith and I will be back in just a moment. He blessed and broke. Then he gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. There's the plan and the will of God that Jesus was talking about when he said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are the will-carrying household of God in this earth. When God commands you to do something, that command authorizes you to do it. And with that authorization comes the power and the resources to carry it out. Those who know how to walk by faith are the ones who will experience victory during these difficult and dangerous times. Be prepared for the days ahead with the Faith and Revelation Package, two new books by Bishop Keith Butler. Faith for Life will teach you why faith is a lifestyle and the answer to overcoming every challenge. Discover why Abraham is the pattern for keeping your faith strong and on track. Accomplish your purpose in life. Live by faith. Experience hope, victory, and the blessing God has for you. In the Revelation of Jesus Christ, Bishop Butler goes through the book of Revelation chapter and verse, sharing insights into God's message of love and the victory that's ahead for the church. It's time to get ready for Christ's return. There is no middle ground. Keep your faith strong and be an overcomer. Go all in for God and discover your part in these end times. Be prepared for the days ahead. Order the Faith and Revelation Package at a special price of only $25.99. Go to kcm.org slash TV special, call toll free 1-800-600-7395 or write to us today. These two books by Bishop Keith Butler will help you live by faith and experience victory during difficult and dangerous times. For an additional 10% off, order your Faith and Revelation Package online. You need to do whatever you need to do to get these books right now. Now, all last week we talked about Faith for Life, overcoming everyday challenges 
and that one is vitally important to your everyday life, but so is the revelation of Jesus Christ. You need to relax and enjoy the book of Revelation. It's a revelation of Jesus. It's not a revelation of hell on earth. Of course, it is a revelation of his victory over hell on earth and to all those that will follow the overcomers. Praise God. That's what that book's about. And so you need to get your hands on this, read it, study it, follow it, work with it. Teach your children to have respect and honor for the book of Revelation instead of being afraid of it because we're living in the end times, no question about that. But this tells you how it comes out. Praise God. This is good stuff and the great awakening. Ah, it's here now. And we just, ah, praise God. You got me all stirred up. Amen. Father, we pray for our partners. We pray for this radio and television audience all over the world. And we praise you and thank you. Thank you, sir, for this great outpouring of your, your presence and your power and your goodness and most of all, your love. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the year of God's grace. There's, there's, and you, every time God zeroes in on something like he zeroed in on faith there for so many years, about the time you and I got in it. And then he zeroes in on healing back when Brother Roberts was first called and all that uh, group of powerful men. You're going to get a fuss on your hands because Satan's trying to stop it and go back to Mark 4. We talked about all last week. He gets those five things working, man, trying to stop the power of God. Well, the same thing's true about the revelation of God's grace. And this, I'm telling you, revelation of his grace. Whew. Now, oh, you're touching his heart. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's by, it's by faith so that it might be by grace. This is what opens the door to prosperity and life and good health and wonderful families. I mean, all grace abounding towards you. Well, praise God. My, what a good, good time we had today. And you just need to be back tomorrow because we're going to really get in some good stuff tomorrow. Till then, this is Kenneth and Keith reminding you again that Jesus is Lord. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is here for you. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. You can also view the webcasts online at your convenience or download them as video or audio files. Continue to grow in God's Word and build your faith with this week's product offer. These Word-based teachings will help you live in victory. Order your copy today. Receive the great grace God is abounding toward you and live in the blessing.